The first step in uh, all lab work, whether you're in school or at home, is uh, safety. So make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. They have uh, splash proof sides and you have some nitrile gloves. Those will protect you from the uh, bleach that we're going to use. The other chemicals we're using are not particularly dangerous, but you just want to be safe anyway. Clean your work area with a 10% solution of bleach. Uh, the main purpose of this is not to necessarily disinfect, but you're going to be removing any unwanted DNA from your work surface because DNA breaks down in bleach. And that'll just make sure that you don't have any environmental DNA getting into your samples. You're going to want nine microcentrifuge tubes, and you're going to want to label them uh, with the number and the date. So just like in class, in our home lab, we're going to want to make sure we keep a lab notebook. So I'm going to start out by putting the date, and then I'm going to go through my samples. I'm going to assign them a tube number. So the first one is Paneolus papilinaceus that I collected um, uh, February 20th. Here's the iNaturalist observation number, and there's the place that I collected it. A lot of the details, uh, such as the exact location, the time, and all the photos of it are going to be kept on my iNaturalist page. So I'll write in my notebook. And I'll assign that to tube number one. And so I'll write down tube number one, the name of the mushroom, and its ID number. I'm going to do this for every single one of these samples before I uh, begin extracting the DNA. So before we do our uh, mushroom extraction, we're going to add our extraction buffer to all of the microcentrifuge tubes. So this extraction buffer is made from Tris uh, and some uh, potassium hydroxide and a couple of other chemicals. And what that's gonna do is allow us to uh, open up the nuclear envelope and get DNA out of the nucleus and also rupture the cell wall of the fungus. So I'm going to take my micro pipette. I got this one for free. Um, these would normally be pretty expensive. And so we're going to change the volume to one hundred microliters. If I can get there. There we go, 100 microliters. I'm going to pipette that into the tube. And I'm going to do that for all of the samples. I have seven of them, and then one, number eight, is going to be a uh, negative control. So I'm not going to add any mushrooms to number eight, only the uh, extraction buffer and other chemicals.
All right, so the next step is uh, we're going to decontaminate our um, tweezers. So I'm gonna use this simple camp stove, which I got for like $20 at Big Five. And then I'm going to burn these tweezers. Uh, this is less to sanitize them and more to actually remove any DNA residue. So once you get them red hot, you know that you've uh, destroyed any DNA that's on there. Carefully place them in this little holder. I'm going to be extremely careful not to touch them. They're going to stay hot for a long time. So once we've sterilized our tweezers, we're then going to take a sample of mushroom. I'm going to not even touch the mushroom itself. I'm just going to stick the tweezer into the bag. And I'm going to pull off a very small piece. A very tiny piece of tissue. Even this is more than is necessary. I'm going to place it into the tube. Close it. And now you can see a small piece of mushroom floating in the tube. I'm going to do that to all of them and then I'm going to grab one of these pestles. These are designed to fit inside the micro centrifuge tube. These have been soaked in bleach and then autoclaved. I'm going to take that sample there, open the tube, place the pestle inside, and then vigorously. Smash the sample around. If I could get the camera to focus on it, would be uh, extremely nice. I'm just going to do that until it's completely smashed up. I'm going to take my used pestle. I'm going to put it into a container with a 10% bleach solution, and that will uh, make sure to neutralize all the DNA. And that's your final smashed up mushroom. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place our samples A heat block and we're at approximately 95 degrees Celsius. Um, it's very hard to control this thing so right now we're at 99 104 so it's hard to get an accurate reading but we want it to be about 95 degrees C um, and what that's going to do is basically explode all the cells that are in there, uh, denature some of the enzymes and proteins that might get in the way of PCR, and generally help our process. And uh, we're going to do this for about 15 minutes, and then we'll move on to the next step. Uh, the next step is I'm going to put my tubes into a... Uh, 10k micro centrifuge uh, and that's just going to separate all the material down this is uh, I would say somewhat optional uh, it really does help get a nice clean solution going 
um, and I'll do this for about five minutes. All right, so we're going to make our uh, master mix. I'm not going to uh, show you the pipetting part, but here's uh, the main ingredient here. This is our uh, 2x PCR master mix. Includes some uh, magnesium chloride, the TAC polymerase, and then each of the four nucleotides bases. Um, in this case, they're in their triphosphate form. Uh, and then I've got the ITS4 reverse primer, ITS1F forward primer, and we put very, very small amounts of that in there. Uh, a tiny, tiny amount. This is uh, dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO. And I put a little bit of that in there. Uh, I got that from uh, eBay. It was not not hard to come by. Uh, and that helps with the, uh, the melting of the primers. And then I've got uh, deionized water. And that's just going to round everything out. So those will be the ingredients in the PCR Master Mix. Uh, so next up, we're going to take pipette tip, pipette some of the liquid into these PCR tubes, which I've already filled with the PCR Master Mix, and then deposit the tip into beaker. So you want to set up a good workflow so you can um, make sure you have your pipette. So I'm going to actually go down all the way to 2.1 microliters. So put on the tip. I'm going to take from the liquid layer on top. up and down a few times and then deposit that close the cap and I'm just going to rinse and repeat this with the rest of them alright so here's the um PCR machine. I'm setting up my um, cycling here. I've got uh, 95 degrees for six minutes. That uh, is just gonna, you know, hopefully denature anything that's gonna get in the way and really get the DNA out of the cells. Then I start my 33 cycles, 95 degrees for 30 seconds. My primers anneal at 54 degrees for 40 seconds. Extension at 72 for 50 seconds, and then finally, uh, final extension at 72 for 10 minutes. Then it's going to go down to 10 degrees C. So I'll slide my uh, tubes, and you see I've marked which one is number one. I can figure out what the other ones are because they're in a strip. And I'm going to close this. Go to start volume 30 microliters start and then uh, there we go